how to create a goldfish using box modeling techniques. Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to review another interactive tutorial, which will show you to create an organic shape, a goldfish, uh, using box modeling techniques and self-cat. And this will also be a low poly model, which is usually the case with box modeling techniques. So to get started, we start with a basic cylinder. As always, uh, box modeling usually starts with a basic primitive. It often is a cube, I, hence the name box modeling. I think that's where, why it is, that's names. But in this case, we start with a basic cylinder. And you can see we resize it, give it a different height, a, a different radius for top and bottom. So it gets it some angle and we change the amount of edges. So it's less edges and then we rotate it. So actually the top is now sideways. And now we start creating extruding parts. So this you can think about it like segments. That's how box modeling is doing. You want to build segments that are a complete, um, like a quads, and it's kind of like a loop around. So they have the same structure over and over. Um, but you're also going to do, so the main concept of box modeling is you add segments and then you use usually basic transformations, move, rotate, scale. So in this case, you can see, instead of going later to the, uh, move rotate scale in the extrusion itself socket has in the advanced settings transformations so in this case it's adding just a position which is move and then it adds scale as well adds an option for scale and it sets the moving scale and then it basically applies the value once we apply we apply the extrusion then we can do a second extrusion so instead of closing the tool you can actually repeat multiple extrusion, same thing. So you see, we click apply, and then we repeat itself, changing the v amount of extrusion. So box modeling could be used in a organic way. You kind of visualize and do how you see it, and then move and scale and rotate. It could be other transformations, uh, or it could be more in a technical way. In this design, it's more in a technical way where it's predefined and calculated the amount of extrusion, and then the exact move and rotate and scale. And as you can see, we start building out the object by just using basic extrusion, which we set on top, and then below in the advanced settings, we set the position and the scale. Now this is using only these two transformations. Later in the tutorial, you'll see we're also gonna use other, other transformations like rotate and some others, but they're the same concept where you choose the basic transformations and add the values. And we start building out the shape um, as we move along. And the main concept that you see over here, the benefit is that you can see the shape starts building out, but the amount of detail is very limited. At this point, you can read on top, we have a total of uh, 49 polygons, which is, you know, literally nothing compared to other way of designing this. If you would use um, parametric modeling applications, uh, solid based um, modeling techniques, you will end up having already thousands of faces. So this is a very low poly, which is good. And now we finished one side of it. So we basically gonna now indent that. So in this case, it's another tool that is used a lot is inset, which is other than extrusion, it kind of makes it like a sideways extrusion. You can see it adds like a side the face and it's being adjusted. And now it adds a second time. So basically it adds a few inner faces and this is going to be used later. You can see there's a tiny face there um, that is basically just 0 0.01. And the idea here is the same idea. We can use transformations. And again, instead of going later to transformation tools in the inset itself, you can add advanced settings, you can add macros where you can add multiple extrusions, I mean, multiple transformations. So it's again using position and scale, which is going to push this in. And this is where you have to have a little bit of understanding of topology structure. The idea we needed to have this extra tiny face, so you have what to stretch and push in. So it's not like self intersecting and so on. So now we move to the other side, and it's basically going to be the same, uh, repeating the same thing, but uh, now I think it's going to start using some more transformations as well. So let's see what we do over here. We do again a position, which is the default you don't have to set and then you add a scale. Okay, so it's the same idea. We scale it in whichever direction we need to scale it to set this. It's as I said, this more technical model has been pre calculated. And now this is just this. And now actually you see it's scaled in a way that it skews it. It's scaled a little bit more one side than the other. And now it's going to add another um, let's see, position, and now we're going to add another scale. Um, once we add the value, we can move to the next. And let's see. Okay, so it's actually done. Okay. So we are done with the basic flow, and uh, 
that was done like everything working with faces and stretching now we actually start working with just a partial face we need to start creating the tail so we're selecting just a few faces instead of a complete polygon and then we're going to adjust this and now we do another thing is also um, we are going to finalize this section and then we're going to select just a few vertices so once we finalize this we're moving down to the vertex selection mode which automatically will select all of the vertices that is included in the previous uh, uh, face selection or polygon selection and now we're deselecting it using down I, i'm doing it holding the control key while using marquee selection which will act then as a deselection and we simply move and scale the remaining selected vertices which is actually just two vertices and positioning them to give the basic shape and now we're going to reselect the faces um, these faces which is actually now the polygon and we are going to um, again extrude and transform them to create the basic shape but you can see the way we split off we originally had one polygon which was a total of eight faces um, based on the original structure that we had eight segments in the cylinder and now we ended up having two complete separate segments each one is split off completely and we modeling one part of it and scaling it and then we can do the same thing on the bottom part um, whenever you have two sections that is equal you can sometimes mirror that we're going to use that technique for later but for now we're going to manually model the same thing in the bottom we're going to do exactly the same thing we just did on the top is we're going to do in the bottom so uh, we're going to quickly model this and then we're going to start doing more advanced stuff so for now all we had is we first created the basic blob the basic shape using segments now we already see how we can split off a segment into two separate segments um, by just selecting a few faces out of the original polygon and moving them stretching them rotating them and now we are going to um, soon okay let's finish this first we can do the same thing i'll marquee select to deselect the faces and it's actually interesting when you move down like it we had originally selected a polygon then you move to vertex selection it will automatically select the vertices the same thing if you were to move down to from polygon to faces or from polygon to edges or from faces to edges or from edges to vertices as long as you go down the ladder polygons the highest then faces then edges and then vertices uh, but if you do the other way around like i selected now a polygon while it had some vertices selected it will automatically deselect the vertices so moving down will always keep the selection just convert them to so if you have a polygon selection moving down to vertices will automatically select all vertices that was in that polygon similarly if you move down to edges we'll select all vertices in that polygon or in that face if it was the case face selection but moving up we'll lose the selection so just a side note that so let's quickly finish this and then we'll move down to a side selection we'll select now the um, side face and start building out a little bit more interesting we're going to start using some more uh, advanced things so for now we still use just move and scale and then once we're going to start designing the fins and these stuff we need a little bit more advanced we need also rotation so let's move to this and let's go over here so let's see what's going on so actually here we have a problem so until now we worked everything with the original face structure we had which was eight segments and then we kept on building segments sideways on both sides of it uh, but now we want to add the side fins and we don't have the amount of details that it's needed because we need basically to have uh, um, small faces and we have only these big faces so we're going to use another technique uh, add the details which is something unique to self care and really amazing for box modeling where you can add um, localized incisions so we're going to add actually mirror that so we have it on both sides the same idea and we add it on top and on bottom so instead of making like the original segments like like double or triple amount of segments so we have the small details that we need we can just keep it everything bigger faces because it's not needed and here we added segments and now we're going to select uh, just four faces that are much smaller based on what we have just created this localized incisions and we added them as a loop selection which basically gave us the same nice loop and kept it later and you see later we're going to mirror here why we need actually these nice loops um, but now we're going to do the same thing over here on this um, finalize it up and quickly move to the side faces and start building the same idea on the sides are stretching out so we added here the top uh, using extrusion as well with um, move scale and now we go to the side face 
we selecting the side and now actually we're going to start doing some more so we're adding position scale and also rotate um, and now we're adding also another extrusion so in this um, inset so we inset basically the inside face uh, making a kind of a smaller face inside so now instead of using edit details we used an inset we took one face and we simply inset it because we needed kind of like a quad structure one single face so it's good this way and we actually moved it down rotate it and extrude it so we kind of created this basic structure for start building out the fins and now we select the side face from that and we can do the same thing start building out extrusion but we're going to use now more techniques we're going to use a combination of uh, rotate move rotate scale to start shaping it actually as needed it's no longer simply linear movement which is just move and scale it's starting to, to shape it a little bit more um, to make it look more like organic shape so um, but overall it's the same techniques now everything the same just more transformations uh, now we add first you know scale it out so make it bigger that section and now we're going to add over here actually we're done already with that shape I skipped that part quickly and now we're going to add another added details to have um, sections over here in the side so we're adding another loop here so we have enough details for this section and another loop so another localized incisions but you can still see we still have only 301 faces even after adding this so which is quite good and now we're going to add instead of adding a segment we're just going to select vertices and going to simply shape them so we're going to um, select just a few vertices and simply position them so it's going to give us the the look of this face instead of being like rectangular we're going to make it look more um, shaped like the eye that it's needed and then it's basically the same thing as you can see we either add segments or adjust them you can see now we're adding kind of this indent by simply moving it and now we're selecting these faces over here and gonna add an inset again so basically to give it this type of view this small kind of uh, section we did the inset before when we needed to push in but now we're not pushing it in it's just a visual to give it this look so now we're actually done with one side exactly how we planted it for so the question is how we do the second side so instead of modeling exactly the same side again we're actually going to use another technique here which is a cube selection so this will allow us to cut through the object similar to the plane cutting you're going to find in the modify section uh, this is a cutting through the object if you have exact selection on it will cut it plus select it could be used just for selection or also for cutting so we're cutting through the object in half and it's not actually splitting actually in plain cutting you have an option to split this you need to manually split so we use the tool split tool to split off whatever was selected um, from this and now we're going to mirror the other side and because we have such a perfect geometry that it looks so nice and 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 the kind of um nicely aligned uh, rectangles cubes we can simply mirror over the other side and merge them together and you see now if we merge them together it's all we need to do is remove the duplicate vertices and this actually it's going to do it automatically we use the merge tool and take a look it removed 55 vertices so now we're basically done with the tutorial um, so i want to show you something else here so we have now a total of just 568 uh, faces and they look actually quite nice and this is basically the concept of box modeling so you have the entire shape done with all of the details and this looks very nice the thing is like what if you need to have more smoothness so often what you do with box modeling is you have two versions we have one version which is in a bigger scene where people don't really see the details but then you make a second version which is more smoother and this is what we do now with the round object and when you zoom into an object you just see it like this and you can even add a smooth shader to make it even smoother this is perfectly smooth and still just about 6,000 faces which compared to making this with other type of modeling you may end up having 100,000 faces something like that so even after the smoothing so yeah this is basically it and i hope you learned something new and uh, thank you and you can watch some other tutorials and please let me know in the comments if you want me to review any other tutorial or any other question you may have thanks for watching bye